When volleyball fans hear the phrase Russian giant, the figure of Dmitry Musersky often comes to mind, and for good reason. But recently another contender for this title has emerged, a volleyball player who made a splash in Italy and has fully announced himself as a potential star of the sport. For those who haven't caught on yet, today we're talking about Maxim Sapochkov, the opposite hitter from Russia. Following tradition, we'll take a quick dive into his biography, which is sure to keep growing, and we'll also dissect the technical features of this towering 220cm tall player. You might not be able to apply all of this in your own game, but it's still worth taking a look. So if you've already liked and subscribed to the channel, now is the perfect time to jump into the biographical part. Let's go! Maxim was born on November 15th in the Russian city Voronezh. It was there that he took his first steps in volleyball at the Youth Sports School of Olympic Reserve No. 14 under the guidance of Sergei Shevchenko. Saposhkov also tried karate, swimming and even basketball, but he found swimming too monotonous and basketball too contact-heavy, which could lead to injuries. By the age of 14, scouts from Russia's leading clubs had their eyes on the young Voronezh native. Initially, he headed to St. Petersburg, where he trained and spent his free time fetching balls during matches. But not seeing enough room for growth, playing-wise, he quickly moved to the locomotive system in Novosibirsk, where he remains to this day as of the release of this video. It was from the Loco Academy that he got the call to join the Russian youth national team, with which he won the silver at the World Championship in 2017 and gold at the European Championship in 2018. He also bagged individual awards as the best opposite hitter and the best scorer at the Youth World Championship in 2019. Despite his eagerness to break into the main team, to this day, Sapochkov hasn't fully gotten his chance. But Lokomotiv knew he had not just height, but huge potential. So they didn't rush to part with the young talent, choosing instead a separate development path for him, if you like gaming analogies. Instead of progressing through the main storyline, Maxim started doing side quests to level up his skills, so that he could then proceed more easily through the game's plot. To put it simply, Luko decided to send the young opposite abroad to gain experience. His first stop was Bulgaria, where he went along with setter Maxim Krezekin. Montana, the club where the locomotive trainees played, already had experience with this system, having previously hosted Konstantin Abaev, which helped the guys adapt more successfully to their new club. Despite the valuable and unusual experience, the opposite himself didn't rate his performance very highly, because there he was the unquestioned leader of his team, so even his not-so-great matches could be forgiven, which undoubtedly affected his progress negatively. A far more productive stint was his loan to Samotlor, where he constantly had to prove that he deserved a spot in the rotation. And that's especially hard when you're coming off the bench. This tough experience allowed Maxim not just to diversify his attacking game, but also to learn some defense, which was a clear weak point for him until the season in Nizhnevartovsk. Unfortunately, the high level of competition didn't help him overcome the psychological issues with his serve. And this is what the player himself considered the weakest link in his game. Despite all the successes in training, his serve became unstable during matches. After an impressive period in Samot Lore, scouts from Verona noticed Sapochkov, who was building a young and ambitious project with a group of, in a good way, eccentric performers, where Maxim would fit perfectly. For Loco, it was also the ideal situation. Their player gets great experience in the most technical league in the world, and none of their domestic competitors would get strengthened by the addition of the towering opposite. And from the very first matches, the Russian opposite caused a stir among Italians. Although he didn't win any trophies with Verona, Maxim certainly made a lasting impression in the Apennines. And not for nothing did he receive an invitation to play for the most titled club in the country, Modena, where he will spend the current season. After all, it was hard not to notice Sapochkov. The opposite became one of the best scorers of the season. And the best when looking at the average points earned per set. A fantastic debut in Italy. These achievements couldn't go unnoticed in Russia, where Maxim was called up to the national team training camp, after which Sapochkov played a series of control matches. Obviously, most fans compare Sapochkov to Dmitry Musersky, although Maxim himself doesn't really like this comparison. Besides their similar height, they don't have that much in common. 
Musevski spent most of his career as a middle blocker, while Sapochkov, despite various specialists' attempts, never really settled into that position in the middle of the net. He feels he is not quick enough to move to the edges of the net. And somehow, I am pretty confident that Maxim can indeed write a bright story about himself as a volleyball player. His professional approach to the sport leaves no doubt about that. As soon as he moved to Novosibirsk, he realized that volleyball couldn't just be a fun activity. Every training session matters, and so does every recovery procedure. After all, it's better to focus on injury prevention rather than treatment, during which you'll miss training sessions or not be able to give your all. Maxim wants to be not just a tall volleyball player, but also technically skilled, which isn't easy with a height of 220 centimeters. Speaking of height, his main growth spurt started around the age of 14 and only finished recently. Or maybe it hasn't finished at all. His height measurements during various tournaments have constantly changed. While height is important for a volleyball player, rapid growth often brings serious problems, typically with the knees. So, these were definitely not the most pleasant times for Maxim and anyone who has experienced this. At the moment, the Russian's biography isn't too extensive, unlike his stature, and I'd really like to say that now I can delve deeper into analyzing his game, which I'll try to do, but the issue is that both the technique and tendencies of an opposite are constantly changing, so in half a year, let alone a year, everything could change significantly. So, don't be surprised. For now, I'll share the information I have at the moment. The main tasks of an opposite on the volleyball court are undoubtedly attacking and serving. So let's start by breaking down these elements, focusing more on the attack. Using this parameter, I'll show you how quickly Maxim is progressing and how difficult it will be for the analytical departments of his opponent's teams in the future. If we take his season in Verona, it would be hard to call Sapozkov's attack varied. His main task was to maintain maximum height, then simply attack in the direction he was moving. Even with such a straightforward approach, the opposite managed to remain very effective. Therefore, most of Maxim's attacks from the first zone ended up in the opponent's sixth zone or hitting the block. Opponent's defenders didn't really have to worry too much about the line direction. Sapochkov often attacked down the line when he was in the fourth zone. And if we look at his old patterns, when attacking from the second zone, not much has changed there. The sharp cross court is still the main direction, especially when faced with a single block. But all this was last season. From his very first games with Modena, the Russian already began actively using line shots to outplay the block. Yes, it's not looking very graceful yet, and he has to twist both his torso and shoulder to make the shot. But something tells me that Maxim will definitely not stop there and will continue to progress in this direction. So his attacks are not only from a great height, but are also disguised, leaving the opponent clueless about what to do next. Back row attacks have also become more varied. Now, it's not just an attempt to get through the middle of the court over the blocker's hands, but also a consistent outplaying of the block. It's noticeable that the decision on where to attack is made on the fly, not pre-selected. If Maxim sees an open space between the block, that's exactly where he'll try to hit. And of course, consistent line attacks have been added. Technically, Sapochkov has also shown progress. For his size, he's very agile and moves quickly in the attack. Not all movements fit the standard style of play for an opposite, but that makes it even more interesting. There's plenty to talk about. For his approach, Maxim usually uses three steps. That is, he starts his motion with his left foot, followed by a standard penultimate and final step. If the attack is from the back row, the opposite only slightly steps outside the court. But if it's from the front row, the approach starts much wider, regardless of whether the attack is from the second or fourth zone. 
The only difference is that when attacking from the second zone, Maxim positions his feet perpendicular to the net, making his torso parallel to this volleyball attribute. In the fourth zone, everything looks like it does for most players. Sapochkov comes out sideways to the net. In the first zone, the foot and torso position is the same as when attacking from the second zone. There are no complaints about the attack technique itself. Everything looks quite beautiful and technical and, after all, that's what the opposite himself was worried about. I'll just note one funny characteristic here. At the initial stage of the swing, Maxim crosses his arms in front of him. It's unlikely this significantly impacts anything else. It's just an exclusively distinctive feature of this player. Now let's move on to the serve. As usual, it all starts with a ritual and our hero today has one too. Before heading to the serving spot, Maxim waits to be given the ball and only then he starts moving to the right location, dribbling the ball with his right hand along the way. Then he just holds the ball, gets mentally ready for the serve, presses the ball to his chest and then tosses it up with his right hand. At the moment, Sapochkov is likely not trying to target anyone in particular with his serve. His task is simply to swipe the ball at the highest point and, of course, land it in court. So, the main target area is usually the 6th zone, where most of the opposite serves end up. Certainly the serve can also go to the 5 or 1 zone, but that depends more on the quality of the toss and the approach to the ball. But I'm confident that Maxim will definitely improve his ball control in this element, which promises his opponents colossal difficulties, which they are already starting to experience regularly. Sapochkov is a very formidable weapon at the block, but you are unlikely to glean anything interesting from his play unless you share his height. Maxim acts very pragmatically. He doesn't try to swing his arms wildly or guess. He simply approaches the opponent and jumps where the ball is contacted, without even using a strong swing, as the more agile guys do. With his height, the opposite doesn't even need to jump much, which makes him a very dangerous opponent, even on fast plays. And with such a wide step and long arms, Sapochkov doesn't always need to run to his middle to help out. Just one step and a little arm extension are enough. So that's the breakdown of Russia's opposite, Maxim Sapochkov. And I really hope you liked it and that you'll show your appreciation with a like, a subscription to the channel and maybe a detailed comment. It won't be any trouble for you, but your attention means a lot to me. Also, in the comments, please write which volleyball player you'd like to see featured in this series. I will definitely take your opinions into account when preparing the next videos. As always, this was Nick. Love what you do and you'll definitely succeed. See you soon. Bye.